If you are a fundamentalist Christian, a regular Christian, a skeptic, or any other type of theist, could you hope with whatever strategy you use to win a debate with an atheist? I'm going to say you're not going to win, and stay tuned, and I'll tell you why. I used to watch the debates with the late Christopher Hitchens, a renowned atheist, against the most notable apologetics, who were usually fundamentalists. I'm not sure I would have liked Mr. Hitchens personally, but you can't argue that he used to make mincemeat out of them, because the only people applauding on the apologetic side are usually members from the fundamentalist church, who largely haven't done any reading on their own and are only applauding what they've been brought up and programmed with since birth. And after the late Christopher Hitchens, the new rising stars of atheism are, of course, Sam Harris and the new Matt Dillahunty. Now, I am obviously not a fundamentalist or evangelical Christian. I'm really not even a regular Christian since I have huge skepticism about a resurrection. If anything, one would classify me somewhere between an agnostic and a Jew. But I don't believe in man-made organizations directing my life so I don't head to the synagogue either. You would have to classify me as some sort of theist. But there's a reason I don't call the Matt Dillahunty Atheist Experience Show that he puts on YouTube. I could talk about how my early life did indeed seem to be pushed by some unseen force from a lowly enlisted soldier to the physical therapist today. I could talk about how man is such a specialized being that there had to be a creator. How there does indeed seem to be a battle of good versus evil. And if I presented all that to Matt Dillahunty, I would lose that debate and it would take less than a minute. Because all I have is subjectivity. I cannot prove any of it. This is what people do not understand. Whether you are an evangelical, a Pentecostal, a Mormon, a Hindu, a Muslim, or any other type of theist. Essentially, every single religion consists of what can only be classified as magic. Yes, it's a belief in magic, and anyone from any religion will raise their eyebrows at you if you tell them this. Because to them, it's not magic. It's the truth of what they were brought up with since they were old enough to be cognizant. And most people do not sit back and reflect, let alone research their own beliefs. They're born with them, and they usually die with them. But it's magic. A Hindu believes in the magic of reincarnation into different castes. A Muslim believes in the magic of Muhammad, who ascended into heaven on a winged horse. A Buddhist believes in reincarnation and the invisible world of Nirvana. And a Christian believes in a variety of miracles performed on earth, including the final one with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that we too will go to an invisible world after we die, it being either heaven or hell. And when you're indoctrinated with this from birth, and you live in a country where it is the norm, this isn't magic, just part of your everyday truth. And you don't question it because you're surrounded by your own. In America, most people are Christian, of some sort. The fundamentalists can bicker with the Episcopalians, but everybody holds the resurrection of Jesus Christ to be true. And when you're brought up with this and surrounded by your own, it's going to be natural for you not to question your belief system. But if you were a Christian brought up in Christianity and surrounded by Hindus, you would probably be a lot more likely to question your own belief system. But the vast majority of people, regardless of your denomination of Christianity or other religions, will not say out loud that their belief system is solely based on this magic. Everybody else's magic and theirs is the truth. But when you try to present this to an atheist, suddenly you're in a position where the other side doesn't believe in magic at all. And in the case of Christianity, now you're trying to prove it with a foundation of old fables written down 50 to 100 years after the fact with absolutely no signed authorship that we can trace it to. Any written transcribed evidence that you have indicating a higher power is going to fall flat in the debate. Socrates talked about God's coming to earth. It doesn't mean it had any validity. This is why the Lee Strobel's, William Lane Craig's, Mike Lacona's, Charles Coulson's, Josh McDowell's, and all the other apologetics cannot win a debate with a Christopher Hitchens or Matt Dillahunty or Sam Harris. Because they think if we take a text that we have no idea who wrote, written a hundred years after the supposed miracle of a resurrection, and they keep saying it, somehow it makes it fact. And it doesn't make it fact. They are trying to use this to prove their magic. 
This would be no different than me believing Socrates through Plato's dialogues when he talks of how the Greek gods intervened with man. So what if Plato wrote it down? It doesn't make the magic true. So once you realize that, you have to realize there's no point to debate an atheist at all. And the problem with the Christians or Christian fundamentalists or other theists is when they call Matt Dillahunte and after they get trounced because Matt knows the Bible better than they do as well as its history, they always revert back to that personal experience of proving their magic. They will tell you how their life changed after they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives. And I can tell you people whose lives have transformed after a Tony Robbins event. If I were to call on Matt Dillahunte's Atheist Experience show and tell him there must be a God because mankind can gather around and rescue a child who's fallen into a well and at the same time create the Third Reich, indicating a battle between good and evil, he would simply say, so what? And I could disagree with that, as mankind is capable of good and evil at the same time, but in terms of logical evidence, I cannot present that in front of him and expect to win. And that's what the Christians do on his show over and over again. They go to personal experience, they go to dreams, they go to miracles they've witnessed. They talk about how their lives transform. While that all may be good stuff, none of that is evidence to an atheist. It's not only not evidence to an atheist, it's not evidence, period. Because at the end of the day, no matter what angle you try to debate the atheist with, you are still trying to prove the supernatural with no evidence to do so. And what you feel and what you see and how you view the uniqueness of our world is not evidence that is even going to remotely shift an atheist perception. Because if you have a Hindu, a Christian, a Muslim, and an atheist all in the same room, the only one who has a logical argument in terms of logic and facts, or should I say lack of facts, is the atheist. You have three people trying to prove magic against one person who simply has one rebuttal, and that rebuttal is to prove it. If you'll watch Dillahunte's show, that's the only question he usually asks. Regardless of what topic or angle, objective or subjective, the Christian comes at him with. He always falls back to prove it. Where's your evidence? And the reason that the Christian or any other theist should never even bother to step on the debate stage with an atheist, because no matter how prepared you are, no matter what research you've done, when the atheist asks you to prove your stance on your magic, at the end of the day, you simply can't. But if you like fiction, you should check out my novel, The Second Fall, an offbeat apocalypse and my version of what Christ would be like if he actually did return to Earth. Highly irreverent and sure to offend the fundamentalist. On Amazon, see the link in the video description and banner, and I will see you next time as we take reason and reality and thrust it into the heart of ignorance.